Hello, I'm Juliette. And Molly, if you listen to the, to the first literature podcast of Courba de Cultura, you should recognize my voice. As you know, I'm a volunteer for Courba de Cultura. Today, I would like to share with you a special quest that I experienced. Have you already asked yourself how many female characters you can think about? I experienced it. And first, nothing came to my mind. Total blank. Why? Is it because there are not a lot of female characters in the literature? I began to search it on the internet, and surprisingly, I find a lot, and a lot, and a lot of names. Some famous names that I forgot from my childhood as Matilda, Pippi Longstocking, or Joe March. Some names that I discovered, or that I still need to discover, from the classical books such as Jan Eyre, Elizabeth Bennet in the British literature, or Madame Bovary in the French one. So why, when I wanted to find some names of female characters, I needed to think about that? Why did it come to my mind naturally, like for the names of male characters? For me, it's a problem of underrepresentation of women, author and female characters in the literature. That's for this reason that today I have three inspiring women with me for this podcast. If you always wanted to meet and discuss with Hermann Conger, Katniss Everdeen or Antigone, stay with me. Hello Antigone, are you ready to share with the listeners your adventures? Hello Juliette, yes, I'm ready. I lived a lot of adventures in my life. I speak in the past because now I passed away. Because of the loss of my city, Teb. And also because of my uncle, who was the king. Yeah, that's a long story, this one. And as everyone can see, you like speaking a lot. Maybe because you come from a great tragedy of Sophocles, with a lot of monologue. Can you say more about yourself in this book? The one who created me was Sophocles, and he gave me the main role in his play, which is called Antigone, like me. I came from the antiquity 441 before Christ. It was a time where women were considered as children. They were not independent. They couldn't vote or live alone in their own houses without men. I hope in 2021 the situation evolved. My story starts with a fight between my two brothers. Both of them wanted to become the king after my dad passed away. The loss of the city said that the traitors couldn't be buried, which at that po time meant you couldn't be able to find peace in the other life. I disagreed totally. With that, and I buried my brother, going against the law and without the permission of my uncle, who became the king of Teb. That's very inspiring and powerful, especially during this historical period. Was it difficult for you to continue to fight for your values against the laws established by men? Yes, it was difficult sometimes. I was a teenager at that moment, and I was so scared. I knew that I would die because of my values and because of my choices. I made some sacrifices, like my love for Hemon and my personal life. It was not easy, but it was necessary to defend my values against some laws created by and for men. What did this experience of asserting yourself and daring to say no teach you? From this experience, I learned that even if you feel scared, which is normal, You can refuse something that you don't want or something against your values and opinions. You have the choice, as men have. <laughs> Thank you so much, Antigone, for your time and your answers. If you want to know more about her, you can open the book Antigone by Sophocles. The link of the book will be in the bio. My quest takes me in the way of Hogwarts to meet the most brilliant wizard, Hermione Granger. Nice to meet you, Hermione. Nice to meet you too. Hello. A lot of people know you already and the saga that you are from, but can you still present yourself in a few words? Sure. I was born on the 19th of September in 1979 and I went to Hogwarts and I was part of the group of friends of Harry Potter. I think that's why people know me. Being there, I form a platform to liberate the house elves. And nowadays I'm happy mom um, of two kids and the Minister of Magic. J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter, a saga of seven volumes, with me inside, known as the most serious students of Hogwarts. Signed her name with initials because her editor was thinking that there would be a less sales of her books if people noticed that she was a woman. And he was wrong. Yes, everyone knows your qualities, Hermione. You are smart, demanding towards yourself, etc. 
In this saga, you are part of the group of Harry Potter and Ron Weasley, but there are a lot of other boys in Hogwarts. So my question is, how did you feel in this magic school among a majority of boys being a witch who was born in a mogul family? For the ones who don't know this, the Mulgo is a name that magic people give to the ones who are not witches or wizards. Well, I was feeling good most of the time, but uh, on some occasions, boys were not nice with me, like Ron in the first volume. They usually felt bad or insecure because I was taking my studies really seriously and having better marks than them. I remember that I ran away to the toilets and I almost died because of a troll. And the reason was that Ron was making fun of me because I wanted to answer a question Professor Fleetwood made. But I forgive him. There was also Draco Malfoy who called me Muggleborn every time he saw me. Witches and wizards who were born in Muggle families were still discriminated by some people. Anyway, there are a lot of inspiring women in the saga such as Minerva McGonagall, Ginny Weasley, Luna Lovegood, Nymphadora Tonks, a lot of powerful and empowered mo women who showed to the world that gender doesn't matter, neither the type of family where you come from. What matter are your values. Exactly, and we should encourage each other. In all the saga, we follow you and we can see a real evolution of yourself. How did you evolve as a person? At the beginning, I was too perfectionist and after, my point of view changed. My marks were still important for me, but I found other things too, like defending our rights against injustice. I led the revolution against Dolores Umbridge, who replaced Dumbledore as a director for a while. I found reasons more important than marks. Defending the ones less fortunate became the most important thing for me and I made it my profession. Nowadays, I'm the Minister of Magic. And I'm not afraid anymore about what people will think about me. It sounds like advice, this last sentence. Do you have some advice to give to young people? Just one simple thing. Fight for your ideas. And don't give up, even if nobody supports you. I can understand you because I was in your place when I fought for the rights of house elves in a universe who was not ready for changes. And don't forget to study for your exams. Thank you, Hermione. See you soon in the volumes of Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling for more adventures. Finally, thanks to my quest, I explore the future to find my third inspiring woman, Katniss Everdeen. Hello, Kat. How are you? I'm very fine. More peaceful than the period of the Hunger Games. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Before to evoke these famous Hunger Games that you talk about, can you present yourself to the listeners? Yeah, of course. Uh, my name is Katniss Everdeen, also known as the Molten Jade uh, from the Hunger Games. Uh, it's a trilogy created by Sir Collins, another amazing woman. Uh, I'm the main character who has to fight in the Hunger Games against other people from other districts. Uh, before, where I lived, the world was divided in 12 districts and the capital who was the government, and every year there was this Hunger Games that each district had to give two tributes, and the goal of this game was to entertain the capital, because they loved to see kids killing each other, until one remained, one winner. I volunteered to save my sister, and I ended up winning the games with Pita, and started a revolution without being aware. That's a very hard situation. Finally, in the books, you begin to be the symbol of an entire revolution of the 12th district of Panem against the capital. How do you feel to embody this symbol? In the beginning, I didn't expect to lead in the revolution. I participated in these games to save my sister. I was uh, the support of my family after the death of my father. That's why I know how to use a bow arrow. After the first games, I realized that a small action can change everything. I didn't want to be the Mockingjay, but after seeing what the capital was doing to Pedham, I decided to become the symbol of this revolution and to lead these women and men. Uh, I was not alone in this revolution. Uh, a lot of people sacrificed their lives for the world. And how did you see your evolution? I think I changed a lot since the beginning of the saga. I started as a teenager, being manipulated by some people. Now I'm an independent woman who led a revolution. I discovered love, but at the same time I lost my sister. So you can say I experienced a lot of hardships. But now I'm a happy mother and I try to be resilient. We can, I believe, see how much you evolve in your life. With your evolution you are very inspiring. Can you share some advice? 
Yeah, just stay as you are. Don't change yourself just because of the pure pressure of the norms. It's easy to say, but hard to do. I know. Thank you so much. If you want to spend more time with Katniss, let's read the saga. I'm glad to say to you that my quest is over. I'm very proud to discover all these women in the literature. If you have some names of female characters, just leave a comment. Goodbye. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you in the next one.